Well, if there's one thing that hip surgeons hate more than anything else, it's finding out that one of their patients has had a dislocation. It feels as though someone's punched you in the guts, to be honest. Someone on the channel asked me to talk about this in a bit more detail. I've done a couple of videos before on it, but I thought it's worth revising what is quite a thorny topic. Well, when I've been told when there's a dislocation, my first thought is, what did I do wrong? I take it really personally as I'm a perfectionist and I want everything to be perfect all the time. Sometimes it's quite hard being me. Once the shock has worn off, though, it's time for cool consideration. Is the patient safe? Where are they? It's more than likely they've called the paramedics and they've admitted to a local hospital for treatment. I get out the notes, look at the assessment that I made of the patient, look at the operation notes, and of course look at the x-rays on the system. I want to know if there are any significant risk factors for that dislocation. What did I do? What was I using to reconstruct the hip? Were there any particular risk factors about that patient's condition? I get in touch with the patient and I arrange to see them as soon as possible to find out what happened and, of course, to plan the next step in managing this distressing complication. If it feels bad for me, it's much worse, of course, for the poor patient. One minute everything's fine, the next they're in pain and unable to move. It's really distressing. Not only do you have to go back into hospital, but you also have to have a procedure to put the hip back into place. Usually this is just a manipulation, so you have an anaesthetic. The surgeon heaves on the hip and puts it back into the socket. If it won't go back, sometimes you have to have an operation to fix it. This means opening up the hip joint and correcting any problems, such as a bit of soft tissue that might have been stuck in there, or even if a component's become loose. So what can we do to reduce the risk? Well, the three things we look at as surgeons. Patient factors, implant factors and surgeon factors. What are the technical problems that might have increased the risk? These things might include not putting the components into the right position. That's up to me. We take great care to plan and do the surgery to make sure that everything is in the right place, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. The next thing we look at is the implants. Were they the right ones to use in this situation? Was there an error, say, in putting the wrong sizes together? This sounds pretty unusual, but it does sometimes happen, despite everyone's best efforts. Dislocations that happen years after surgery are often caused by wear of the bearing surfaces, making the whole thing loose. The final factor, of course, is then related to the patient. Are there any conditions like loose ligaments or a neurological problem such as Parkinson's or a stroke? Have they had a fall or have not followed the post-operative instructions to the letter? Excessive twisting and bending in the first few weeks after surgery can stretch the soft tissues and cause the hip to dislocate. More often than not, though, there isn't a clear cause and it's just one of those things. Humans and surgery are, of course, complicated and complicated things are intrinsically hazardous. So what can you do to reduce the risk of dislocation if you're thinking of having a hip replacement? First of all, choose a surgeon who does lots of hips. The more you do, the better you get generally. An experienced hip surgeon will take everything into account and use the right techniques and implants for your needs. Follow the physiotherapist's instructions to the letter. You'll be told how to mobilise safely and which movements to avoid. Especially in the first few weeks after surgery, think twice before doing anything out of the ordinary. Listen to your body. Be aware of surroundings to make sure that there aren't any trip hazards, such as cables, low furniture and loose rugs. Don't bend your hip more than 90 degrees until you've been signed off. Dislocation is the commonest complication of hip replacement surgery, but even so, it doesn't happen very often. Most people never have one, and I hope that reassures you. If you'd like to know anything more about dislocation or anything to do with hip surgery in general, please get in touch. The details are in the description below. If you've got any comments or questions, you can always leave them in the comments as well. Looking forward to seeing you again next time. Thanks for watching.